Murdoch's whistle. Plate layers were inspecting the tracks on the main line. They checked the rails for signs of wear and replaced ballast where needed. It was imperative the engines whistled to tell the men to clear the line. One morning, Gordon arrived at Edwards Station, looking rather annoyed. Problem, Gordon? asked Boko. There is something to be said, Gordon replied, for quiet engines like you, Boko. I understand we must whistle for the plate layers, but some of it is most excessive. It isn't wrong, of course, but... Gordon's speech was interrupted by a booming whistle in the distance. It grew longer and louder, and soon Murdoch shrieked through with a heavy goods train. <laughs> I rest my case, Gordon harumphed. Later, Boko found Murdoch resting in the sheds. If you've come to complain about my whistle, snapped Murdoch. I've heard quite enough from Gordon already. I'm not complaining. I'm concerned, Boko interjected. I've never heard you make such a racket. This blasted new driver seems to think my whistle's a toy. Blows at any chance he gets. Too long and much too loud, Murdoch shuddered. I tell him to stop but he only laughs. Mm, I quite understand, murmured Boko. In my experience, new drivers tend to learn their lesson rather quickly. It can't happen quickly enough, sighed Murdoch. The plate layers had nearly reached Marin Station. Every day, Murdoch would rush past, whistling well before reaching the men and long after, too. You're going to wear him out at this rate, sighed the fireman. Nonsense, scoffed the driver. Engines like him are meant for it. Why give him a big, booming hooter if we're not going to use it? I don't think you understand which engine you're driving, chuckled the fireman. He'll never want to whistle again after you're through with him. The fireman was right. Murdoch grew increasingly irritated at the sound of his own whistle and barely said a word to anyone as he scowled down the line. Boko tried to comfort him, but the other engines weren't as sympathetic. When do we get some of that peace and quiet you're always moaning about? teased Henry and James. One morning, mist shrouded the island and a light rain made the rails damp. As Murdoch set off with his goods, he was struggling to see the line ahead. All too often, his focus was broken by his own whistle. Will you stop that? He barked at the driver. This journey will be hard enough without you making that racket. Have to let people know we're coming, especially in this mist, don't we? The driver replied with a smirk. They soon approached Edward's station. Murdoch knew what came next. Gordon's Hill and a hard climb. Boko was nearby and tried to hoot a friendly hello. Of course, it was swallowed by the sound of Murdoch's own whistle. He charged at the hill, puffing and snorting until he reached the top. Murdoch braced himself for what would come next, but there was no whistle. I'm glad you're seeing sense, sighed Murdoch, but this is one time we have to whistle. I, I can't, cried the driver. Something's jammed. Murdoch went pale. 
The plate layers were just down the line. The driver pulled the whistle chain with all his might, but still no sound came. Look out! Look out! Murdoch shouted into the mist. The plate layers were startled. They saw the silhouette of an engine and jumped clear just in time. With brakes screeching, Murdoch flew past, finally coming to a halt a few miles further on. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Soon, Boko arrived to help. He took Murdoch to the workstation, then carried on with the goods. I'd say the lesson has been learned, Boko winked, as he saw the fat controller talking severely to the driver. Soon, he came to see Murdoch. I'm very proud of you, Murdoch. The plate layers tell me you've never been so loud before. Your quick thinking prevented a very nasty accident. We'll soon have you mended. For now, I'm sure you'll enjoy some whistle-free moments of peace. Thank you, sir, chuckled Murdoch. Sure enough, Murdoch was soon back on the main line. His whistle was working better than ever, and saw far less usage than before. The driver had taken a temporary leave from the footplate. He volunteered to assist the plate layers with repairing the line. Whenever he heard Murdoch's whistle, he smiled, knowing it meant one of two things, a warning to stand clear, or a means of aggravating Gordon. 